Now, in the last few weeks, I have been lucky enough to show you the Mizuno and TaylorMade tour truck. But this afternoon, I am heading down to Scottsdale HQ and the Shrixen tour truck is there. And I guess if we're perfectly honest with each other right now, this is probably a brand you've seen a lot with the likes of Shane Lowry and Brooks Kepka, but it's never a brand you've gone, you know what, I'm dying to try their irons. I think the Strixon ZX5 irons could be the best irons yet of 2024. Now, just based on looks, performance, feel, and the fact that you probably never would have gone down this route. So, we're gonna head down to Scottsdale HQ because they have an open day today. Now, I know 100% there is gonna be a golfer down there that goes, you know what, these Strixon ZX5s are for me. Well, I'm going down there on a hunch, but the looks, the read-up, the performance of these irons, I know there's going to be a golfer. Come on, head down to Scottsdale HQ with me. Let's go on the Strixon Tour Truck, find a golfer that is getting the Strixon ZX5s, just purely because they are class. So we've just arrived down here at Scottsdale HQ and the Strixon Tour Truck is behind me. Look at the size of this thing. It's absolutely massive. It feels a lot bigger than the others. Now, I've got a story for you today. There's a gent just been fitted. He's come down with his two mates and we're going to build his irons. He doesn't know this. We're going to build his irons on the tour truck. I'm going to show you the exact process. Now, I'm looking at these irons thinking, wow, these things look seriously forgiving, but also look seriously pure. Strixon ZX5. Now let me know what you think of these, but this is the process. Let's go and jump on the truck. Let's go and meet Joe. Let's go and see how they build his irons. Now, the first thing that strikes you as you walk onto the Strixon tour truck is the actual feel and size of the inside. It feels really roomy. Now here are the irons in question. The Strixon ZX5s. And this is the spec we are gonna build for the gent here today. Now he's gone for Golf Pride Grips in grey. And I think this is a great combo, by the way. It really matches the recoil shafts. So having that sort of gray shaft into the gray grip with a bit of white in there is gonna look so good. Now, the first thing to do is abrade the end of the golf club. Now, all you have to know is that this makes the glue and the head and the shaft stick together better. And you have to repeat this process on the end of every single golf club. So this is down from five iron all the way down to pitching wedge. You have to abrade the tip by roughly an inch to inch and a half. So the glue has something to stick to. Now, once this is repeated and we just make sure all the heads are correct and they fit on just nice and snug, we then have to take them all off. Now, at this point, they're not glued on, so do not worry. Taking them off in order from five iron all the way down to pitching wedge, we're now getting ready to put the ferrule on. Now, the ferrule is essentially that little black shiny thing that sits just above the hosel and the neck of the club. So doing this in order, we grab the ferrule from this box and the different depending on if it's a wedge, depending on if it's a Strix and ZX5, ZX4 or ZX7, and we get a hammer. And I always think this is gonna break it for some weird reason. Hammer it on and this puts it down to the correct length. So therefore the shaft sits all the way into the base of the head. And I think this makes it such a quicker process. And like we did with the abrasion of the tip, we have to repeat it from five iron all the way down to pitching wedge. Let's now move on to the next stage, which is measuring the correct length of the golf shaft for that specific loft of iron. Now, when we're doing this, we're working towards a spec sheet specifically for a Strixon ZX5. Now, you'll notice that every single iron has a different length because this is a variable set of irons. And the marking is actually a little bit shorter than the length required to account for the butt end of the golf club. So marking it all the way again from five iron down to pitching wedge. And this is on a USJ and RNA ruler. So here are the specs that we're working to today. And this is for, like I say, the Strix and ZX5. But this is different to what happens on tour. On tour, we have just one Pacific length, loft and lie, basically. Yeah. Whereas retail, more or less every head has its own length. Yeah. Um, loft and lie. Nine times out of 10, the lie is very similar. 
but yeah. the loft between the fives, the sevens, and the blades yeah, can yeah. vary, um, one being stronger than the other. <coughs> So now using those lines we created to mark the shaft length, all we have to do is cut it to length, taking a different amount off for each club. Now Joe makes this look really, really easy. If I was doing this, it would definitely take a lot longer. But I guess that is why he builds clubs the likes of Brooks Kepka and Shane Lowry out on tour. This is really really cool so far i do hope you're enjoying this process let's now move on to the next stage which at this point is just tidying up the tip end so the bit where we just cut just to make sure there's no sharp abrasive bits just sanding it off and making it nice and smooth how many sets are you building a week out on tour it can vary it really can vary um obviously when the new products come out you're very busy um but then we just throughout the weeks months it's just maintaining um, the players can go anywhere between two to three sets a year, um, but we, I try and loft and lie their clubs once a week, if not every two weeks, yeah, yeah. just to make sure loft and lies are correct. And you just, do you have all their specs on the truck here? So like, for yes. example, so, Shane Lowry? Yep, so ever since I was on tour to now, I've got everything that's ever built for a tour player. Um, and then we have the master spec, which is, gets updated if we ever change anything like the grip layers. Yeah. If they find that we need to go a little bit more upright flat, that gets changed. Um, even if it's down to changing the bounce on their wedge, everything gets updated. So um, it goes onto the system and then um, everyone can see it then basically. Are these weights just adding in to make sure it's the right swing weight? Yeah, so it's just like little brass weights that vary between half a gram. I think the heaviest we do in graphite's four grams, I think. So then all we do is just add them so the, the whole set has got effectively the same swing weight, so it all feels the same between 5-iron down to A-wedge. What's been like the most popular iron on tour <coughs> in the last two or three years? ZX7. And what's the feedback from the players in terms of like, why? They, they like the feel from the head and obviously the shape, the thickness of the top, top edge, um, but it's mainly the sole. Mm -hmm. The sole, the way it goes through the turf, um, they just find there's nothing out there that's as good. Um, but also, they don't tend to go with blades because of the ZX7 and the shape of the head and the thickness of the top line. They don't feel they need to go to blades, yeah, yeah. whereas they can get away with using ZX7 um, purely because it's not a, a massive top line um, and it's it, it just sits very well with them in terms of visually, performance, and also why make the game harder than it already is, sure. having a blade. And out of interest, what's the difference between them and the ZX-5, which you're building here? So the ZX-5 is obviously, it's a little bit, little bit of a bigger head, um, a little bit more powerful, launches the ball a little bit higher, but it's got a little bit less spin. So it's a few of the tour players have actually started to change from ZX-7 to ZX-5 and the long irons, just to get that ball a little bit more airborne, helps them coming into greens to stop a little bit quicker because it's got more height on it um, but it's just a little bit more forgiving as well yeah and obviously the head is a slightly bigger head again helping being more forgiving now in my opinion it's really cool to hear what the pros are using out on tour and it's interesting to hear that you could do a graduated set with all the clubs in this brand we're now getting to the point where we've nearly got a golf club that's built We've got to glue the heads on. So we've created this mixture inside this blue cabinet. I'm going to call it a cabinet um, where we've mixed the glue and we're going to put it on the tip of the golf club, placing the golf club down all the way until the shaft meets the bottom of the club. So where the ferrule lines up with the top of the iron head. Now we made these lines here and this is what the tape is on the golf club. These shafts have been pured. So what Joey's doing here is lining up that pured line, which is being marked on by the machine to make sure it sits right on top. So it's in the correct position for the most stable part of that golf shaft. After that is finished and we've let the glue just cure slightly, it's now time to grip the golf clubs. But I asked Joe, how often do the pros change their wedges? Yeah, I mean, it could be anywhere between a month to three months. And it's normally like the sand wedge, lob wedge. Yeah. But um, I'll just build them up a brand new, if they use a gap wedge or a pitching wedge as well in the um, RTX 6, I'll just build up the whole lot. 
at least then they've got a new set of wedges that they can put into play. And they all match, I guess, in the sense of... All match to their previous specs, unless they stay, oh, I've, won, I've got a low bounce, but ideally I want mid. Yeah. And then we might just go out and just check the mid, and maybe just need a little bit of a grind um, on the heel, just as when they open it up, the leading edge doesn't pop up. Um, and then, yeah, then they might say, we can do me a low and a mid, depending on where they're playing. Um, at least they're covered for if it's hard or I'm guessing like softer. open weeks are the sort of like big weeks where things could change in that department a little bit more. Not really. So we try and get our players set up ready for the open a good week or two in advance. Just so that when they get to the major, they haven't got to worry about the equipment. Um, the only thing we might end up doing is building a few two irons or... Um, a stronger lofted three wood just to keep the ball flight down or if they want a two iron just to chase it down the fairway yeah but apart uh, from that like apart they just from don't that, really change much they won't change anything no. to be fair um, at the open the only thing we might do is like a re-grips loft and lie checks um, but that's about it and then we stay there all week just to make sure they've got everything for the week or if anything happens we're there to fix it. And how does that differ from a normal week? So do you arrive on a Monday, go on a Wednesday usually? So, yeah, normally, yeah, Monday to Wednesday. Uh, we just normally do the practice days, uh, then fly home in a truck and move on to the next, uh, the next event. How many events are you doing a year? Uh, I think I cover 28. Did you do the Ryder Cup? Uh, yes, so, yeah. I went out to the Ryder Cup, yeah. And then it's going to be a, a good one this year as well because obviously you've got the Olympics. Yeah. We're now coming towards the end of this process. And it's great to see how Joe works his way around this tour truck. Everything the club builders need is on this truck and everything is in a specific place. After gripping all the golf clubs, you can now see another spec sheet. This is to set the correct loft and lie angle for standard for Strixen ZX5 irons. This will differ brand to brand and possibly and possibly model to model. Also, we've got to take into account each golfer is slightly different, so they will require potentially a different lie angle. Now, when I see people do this, I had to do this part of my PJ training, and I thought I was going to snap the head. <laughs> now, with these being forged, they do move quite easily. Well, if you know what you're doing, that is. This is repeated for every single iron according to the spec sheet, and we're not far off now. But, 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 you got to have a look at what I found in here. So I went rooting the draws as Joe was finishing off that loft and lie part of the process, and just look what I found. Here are some of the wedges. Look how many there are. Different lies, different lofts, different bounce angles. Just look how many are in here. Now, it wasn't just enough looking in this drawer. I had to go a little bit further and dive into the drawer just below. And look what I stumbled upon. Now, look at these. You have to. Just promise me you're going to look at this. Because on here, I was a little bit amazed. I found tour issue wedges. Look at what these say on them. I mean, even look at the packaging. It's totally different. Have a look at that little tour rack here just above my thumb. Now, that is seriously cool to find on this truck. Plus, not only do you have the wedges and the irons, but all the drivers, fairway woods, and hybrids are fully stocked up every single week on the tour truck. You've got to think, this has to meet the requirements of every single staff player, plus trying to get new golfers to use their products. There will be some golfers out on tour who aren't ambassadors, aren't staff players for Strixton, but still use their products. Okay, on to the final golf club for the Loft and Lie. This process really does amaze me. It looks like something out of the 17th century, but it is absolutely integral to make sure the golf club performs correctly. The ball launches right, and therefore the club does what it says on the tin. Now, once that's done, you then just sort of polish off the end of the ferrule and make sure there's no ridge overhanging. Again, this is actually quite hard. If you get this wrong, you can actually get a flat side and it all starts to then look a little bit nasty. This process is nearly done. The irons for the gen are ready. Just the final finishing touch. Let's shine them off, polish them up, and here is the finished process. 
The pitching wedge looks an absolute beaut. And I like this sort of section at the back here where the Strixen area is and down at the golf ball. This is the five iron. I love the look of the top edge. And this is why I think these could be one of the most popular irons of 2024. And I think you'll definitely agree with me here. But how cool was it to look on the Strixen tour truck? Let's head home. Well, <laughs> we are back. I told you we would get a golfer that went down the Strixen ZX5 Avenue. Like, can you see what I was saying? The looks, the performance, the top line, everything about that golf club just offers, I guess, what a club golfer looks for. Forgiveness, but still looks sleek, still looks like a player's iron. Now, I also really enjoyed the stories that we had on that truck, and I'm, I got me thinking, with all this, I need to test these irons myself. I'm going off what club golfers have said. I'm going off what forums are saying. And that's why I think these could be the best irons yet of 2024. But to be honest with you, to really settle the deal, I need to try them myself. So I guess it's time in a few weeks to take them out on the golf course. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Hope you did enjoy this video of seeing a club golfer's irons being built on the tour truck. What a special day for them. And I can't wait to see you on another video here on How Good Golf.